Ms. Peregrine Fisher, private detective. I didn't realise it was common for young ladies to do detective work. Oh, it isn't. But I'm not common. And thank you, and thank you for saying so in regards to it being something that stands out, especially when there's so much to see. Um, I think what makes it special is uh, the playfulness. It's naive, but it's sexy. You know, there's a really big mix of flavours there for an audience to fall in love with. And yeah, it's the murder mystery, but then there's this, a lot of those murder mysteries are kind of older characters. They're not playing with that thing of Peregrine and James are in their, you know, late 20s or early 30s and falling in love and navigating, you know, whether it be marriage or navigating what it means to kind of retire certain bits and pieces about their... Um, their livelihoods, especially Peregrine as a female in the 60s, if she falls in love with James and marries him, she like she retires all her rights and all her privileges. So it's really fun to see that stuff explored. I think that's what makes our show different is Peregrine and James's relationship and the, the, the what's it called? The chemistry. There's been a murder. No. What? To you, going undercover. Undercover. I love the change in the format. I love the change in the format. I think the, the hardest thing about the first season was that it was quite long. Um, you had like one or two mysteries and, and there was a lot to fill out. And as actors, we could feel that we were kind of, although we loved it, we could feel that we were, if we're Olympic athletes, we're like swimming in jelly and it's really hard. <laughs> It's really hard to keep that afloat and to keep that working for an audience because you, you make this stuff for people to have a good time watching it. You want to be thrilled. You want to be laughing. You want to be in awe. You want to be just swept up and escaping into this story, right? So the best thing about the second season format is that it's faster. It's more active. There's more stunts. We can move faster. There's eight different worlds that you can play with that will just sweep you into and pick you up. And then the next one, you just kind of explode into and move on. So it's kind of relentless in its energy, which is something that makes Miss Fisher's modern murder mystery so special. And we hope that audiences who fall in love with like, you know, if they watch one and then they fall into the next, that they just keep binging it, you know, and it just, they end up at the end of it going, oh, whoa, what happened? Did you, what, did you see that? We want them to just fall in love with the madness of it all. So. I'm, I'm really grateful for the change in format, big time. You take far too many risks. I thought that's what you liked about me. Yeah, no, and it's a great question. And I, I found it really hard to, when we were making it with the producers in discussion, I'm going, well, I was, I was asking them, um, you know, what, what, why would James do that? And, what about him does it? You know, because if you're being truthful and honest, in the 60s, there was no impetus or no kind of uh, uh, invitation for him to be that kind of man. There's no other reason for it. And so when thinking about it, I went, well, it's because he's a good human being. It's because he's just. It's because he understands the sense of justice and and I think, I think too, you know, what was beautiful about the second season is we get to see James's family and that massive influence of what his mother would have been uh, on his life. And we don't get to meet her, but you understand the moment you meet his father, you go, his father's a really beautiful man. Imagine what his mum would have been like. Imagine what her love would have been for him. And I think so whenever he is interacting, especially with Peregrine, and sees that big vivacious light that she has in her passion and her stamina and who she is, he's so impressed by it. And I think in James's life, working on farms and having done that stuff physically, it's like, if you can do the work and if you can show up and make it happen, you have his respect until you break his heart or do something wrong, which she continues to do. But the great thing about that is James is, James will trust you and love you regardless of who you are until you do something wrong, until you make that mistake, which for me is a great lesson for all of us. I think, you know, if, if we can all have a little bit of James's trust and his naivety, I think it's a beautiful quality, his innocence. And I've tried to capture that a lot in the first and then in the second, make him a gentleman, like a man unlike anything else. So, um, yeah. And the best thing is having two older sisters personally that would like beat me to a pulp if I did anything wrong or if I was just a stupid man. So that's a massive influence. I'm, I'm, you know, 
I credit them, they get 5% of all fees, you know? Yeah. 